Hello everyone, welcome to Broadview, my name is Joseph. On February 27th, Russian President Vladimir Putin ordered to put nuclear deterrent forces on high alert. Before, Putin had already sent signals to threaten the Ukraine with the potential use of nuclear weapons. In Europe, the concern about nuclear weapons had faded away after the Cold War, but now it came back in full swing. Many are nervously awaiting to see whether the Russia-Ukraine war will head towards World War III and whether Russia will actually drop an atomic bomb on the Ukraine. A number of decades ago, the former Soviet Union made a few moves that had everyone concerned. Now, did you know that the Soviet Union casually used nuclear weapons to extinguish fire, open canals, dig reservoirs, and not to mention build military systems? In 1963, a natural gas well suffered a blowout. Naturally, it caught fire. After exhausting the traditional firefighting methods, all attempts to put out the fire had failed, and it burned steadily for the next three years. The vast reservoirs of natural gas going up in smoke resulted in the loss of more than 12 million cubic meters of gas per day, roughly the equivalent volume of 12 Empire State buildings. Hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of natural gas burnt up each day. Now this happened in the middle of the Cold War, when the Soviet Union was competing against the US for supremacy in nuclear warfare. The Soviet Union established program number seven to instigate peaceful nuclear explosions. It justified the carrying out of extensive tests on atomic energy for the national economy. Physicists calculated that the pressure resulted from the nuclear bomb could blow out the fire. The natural gas field was in Uzbekistan. At first, the officials were hesitant to go ahead with this idea. They were worried about the consequences. After all, the fire had already been burning for a long while. Compared to detonating a nuclear bomb, maybe the lesser of the two evils was to let the fire burn for a bit longer until a better solution came up. An incident that happened in Kazakhstan gave Uzbekistan inspiration to finally go ahead with this plan. In 1965, Kazakhstan was preparing to dig a reservoir. On January the 15th, a nuclear bomb nine times more powerful than the bomb dropped on Hiroshima was detonated from 178 meters deep underground. With the sound of a deafening explosion, the mushroom cloud instantly billowed to an altitude of five kilometers. A blast wave at a height of 950 meters discharged 10.3 million tons of soil. Physicist Yuri Trutnev was stunned when he witnessed the scene. Although this wasn't his first time witnessing a nuclear explosion, he had never seen such a spectacular scene before. After a full 10 hours, the smoke dispersed, and a large crater 430 meters long and 100 meters deep appeared on the ground. The man-made Lake Chagan was created. So was it safe to drink the water from Lake Chagan? The locals called this reservoir the Atomic Lake and shied away from it. The Soviets explained to the locals the difference between nuclear explosion and nuclear leakage. They clarified that after full combustion, the nuclear explosion would leave minimal residual radioactive materials. It wouldn't result in long-term radiation, they insisted. Although, after the reservoir was built, the officials monitored the water quality and explained that the water was safe to drink, though the locals were still hesitant and did not want to take the risk. Efim Pavlovich Slavsky was the Minister of Medium Machine Building. He jumped in, swam around the lake to prove that the water was safe. The old man probably didn't lie about the water being safe. He was 67 years old when he swam in Atomic Lake, and he lived until he was 93 years old. After the completion of Atomic Lake, the Soviet Union gained so much confidence in using nuclear bombs that it had a sense of superiority over the United States. Next, the Soviet Union turned to Uzbekistan and went ahead with the plan to put out the fire with a nuclear bomb. By then, the flame was as high as an unbelievable 300 meters. The fire had been burning for over 1,000 days. It was impossible to get even close to the fire. The engineers went on site to investigate in helicopters. It said that during autumn, flocks of migrating birds got caught in the fire and turned into ashes before they could even hit the ground. In the fall of 1966, two slant wells were drilled as close as possible to the natural gas well that was burning uncontrollably. At a depth of 1,500 meters, at a distance of 35 meters from the leaking well, a nuclear bomb was lowered into one of the holes. The hole was then filled with cement to contain the explosion and prevent it from erupting to the surface. Did this blast really succeed in putting out the fire? Prior to this, Soviet scientists had tested it in an experimental field outside of Moscow. After making meticulous analysis, the atomic bomb was carefully crafted 
and the specific angle to detonate the bomb was repeatedly calculated and tested. It was a complex task because the scientists had to make sure that the explosion had enough power to instantly vitrify the stratum. The most important was to ensure that the explosion wouldn't cause problems with nuclear pollution because the Soviets still wanted to exploit the natural gas well into the future. On the last day of September, the nuclear bomb was detonated. An underground tremor of unprecedented force shook the ground. It took only 23 seconds for the flames to go out. After inspection, the risk of radioactive contamination was assessed to be low. By December, the fields resumed normal operations. After this successful experience, the Soviets set out another crazy goal to dig a canal with a nuclear bomb. Caspian Sea is located south of the then Soviet Union. But since the founding of the Soviet Union, the Caspian Sea had continued to dry up, which created problems. The authorities thought of an idea to redirect the major rivers that flow into the north to go south into the Caspian Sea. The specific plan to achieve this end result was violently destructive. Nuclear bombs would be used to dig out canals and reconnect the major rivers in the north to form a water system and then a dam would be built to make the water system flow south instead of north. In March 1971, the first nuclear bomb was detonated. It successfully blasted a huge 700 meter long tunnel. But after the explosion of the first bomb, the second one got put on hold. What happened? The Soviets realized that to complete the entire project, at least 250 nuclear bombs would need to be detonated around Moscow. Each bomb would be equivalent to three to five times that of the Hiroshima bomb. The Soviet authorities and scientists were taken aback by the magnitude of this project, so they decided to just start slow and steady with this one blast. I'm not sure if you still remember the old game called Red Alert. In one of the missions, the Soviets had a seismic tank. It was supposed to create massive earthquakes to damage everything in its wake. The seismic tank seems to be a technology that only exists in science fiction, but actually this mission was created based on a true event. In this true story, the Soviets were about to embark on a mission to use nuclear bombs to control the Earth. Soviet scientists came to understand that it wouldn't be difficult to create artificial earthquakes if the geological structure of a certain region was completely known. They would just need to drop a nuclear bomb at the most fragile point. But the pain spot was that back then, the geological structure of the underground was too complex to be fully known. The Soviets figured out a straightforward way to understand the underground structure. First dig a well, and then drop a nuclear bomb into the well. And then finally map the underground structure by analyzing the seismic waves created by that bomb. The operation began in 1971. They created 14 underground tunnels that spanned their vast territory through explosion, dug at least 39 deep wells, threw over 39 nuclear bombs into the wells, and the end result was that the operation resulted in over 39 magnitude 5 artificial earthquakes. Sure enough, these 39 nuclear bombs weren't detonated for nothing. They quickly figured out the geological structure of their own land. So after this project, it seems that the seismic tank in Red Alert wasn't far off. At the same time, this exploration process using nuclear weapons also revealed dozens of giant oil and gas fields in Siberia. The Soviet Union had blown up two huge pits of over 2,000 meters deep and 400 meters wide underground, which were used to bury industrial wastewater. These two pits are still in safe operations today. There's a third pit confirmed by the Soviet scientists that's used for burying radioactive waste. It's similar to using the earth as a pressure cooker, pouring all of the nuclear waste into it and then setting it off with a hydrogen bomb. All of the waste is vitrified and the radioactive waste disappears with the smoke. Are nuclear bombs really so useful? Obviously, these are success stories. The Soviet Union may have experienced many more failures than we think. But we may never find out about these failures if they never disclose the information. Later, historians concluded that the former Soviet Union conducted a total of 124 nuclear explosions, equivalent to dropping 75 Hiroshima bombs. The last detonation occurred on September the 6th, 1988. By 1989, the US and Soviet Union finally ended their nuclear testing activities. They also reached support for a comprehensive nuclear test ban treaty, including a ban of nuclear testing for peaceful purposes. Conducting nuclear experiments sounds like a scary idea to most of us ordinary folk. It's also a sensitive topic for the countries doing them. When I first heard about this, I would have never imagined that they would use a bomb to extinguish a fire. 
What's your take on this? Do you think Russia as a fighting nation will introduce nuclear bombs into war? No matter how much immediate benefit a nuclear bomb could bring to mankind, in the long run it'll definitely lead humanity into destruction. So countries and leaders should be cautious in developing and using nuclear bombs. Well, thank you for watching and feel free to leave your thoughts on this topic in the comments section below. We'll see you next time.